When you hear the name Duke, you think of the G.I. Joe leader with blonde hair. When you hear the name Snake Eyes, you think of a masked ninja dressed in black. And when you hear the name of Cobra Commander, you think of either the cunning leader of Cobra or the cowardly leader of Cobra, depending on the story. Is he wearing the blue hood or the silver mask? Hmm, wait a minute. Does Cobra Commander have a dual personality? So which version of Cobra Commander is correct? Well, they both are. Cobra Commander wears different outfits at different times for different reasons. Remember the black coat and strange semi-transparent silver mask? Also, he is written slightly different depending on the writer and the medium. Okay, that makes sense. Different writers result in different characterizations. So, what about this guy? Is it Sidetrack or Sidetrack? Released two years apart, these were two different characters. The first was possibly a redo of the Ambush character due to copyright issues. More about that later. While the second was named after a Hasbro employee and had a different bio and speciality. The characters were so minor that most people probably never noticed. G.I. Joe was first and foremost a toy line from Hasbro. Stories were created to sell the toys. So, when someone says that the cartoon was a 30-minute commercial, they are correct. Between the years 1982 and 1994, there were over 270 unique characters created for the toy line, and many stories written about them. As we read or watch the stories, we develop a connection to these characters, and what we believe they should look like and how they should be. Unfortunately, Hasbro did not always value the characters as much as we did, and that is where the problems arose after the discontinuation of the A Real American Hero toy line in 1994. The first major reboot of the brand happened with G.I. Joe Extreme in 1995. We were given brand new characters that resembled some old favorites, such as Lieutenant Stone for Duke, Mayday for Scarlet, Black Dragon for Snake Eyes, and Freight for Roadblock. These were more extreme characters. They were bigger, bulkier, and spoke louder. And that's the way we like it! G.I. Joe Extreme was also the first example of reusing old character names for new characters. Metalhead was originally a Cobra anti-tank specialist with a voice-activated weapons command system built into his suit. Yelling bang, bang, would launch the missiles. In G.I. Joe Extreme, the new Metalhead was a G.I. Joe computer specialist who would blast rock and roll music during battle. Setting what you know aside, which one do you think fits the name better? Sergeant Savage was a World War II soldier who was cryogenically frozen and brought back in 1994 in the A Real American Hero World, but was the only character from the Sergeant Savage story carried over to G.I. Joe Extreme, who kept his backstory, minus the A Real American Hero connection. Inferno, the pyromaniac scar agent, would later be reused in the A Real American Hero 8-inch toy line as a G.I. Joe firefighter specialist. Hasbro was known for reusing the same figures for new characters, such as Barricade in 1992 reused as Gears in 1994, or Ice Cream Soldier in 1994 reused as Shock Viper in 2002. So it was not all that surprising when we had figures that looked the same but were different characters. This caused some toy character confusion in the late 90s and into the early 2000s when they brought a real American hero back. Hasbro had lost the trademark to some of the characters, so when they brought a real American hero back, some names had to be modified or changed. While they have gotten many trademarks back, some they have not. Adding a rank to the character's name, or renaming a character by adding in the character's real name, was a way they went around the trademark issue, such as Agent Scarlet or Sergeant Airborne. General Hawk is an interesting example. He went from Hawk to General Hawk, to General Tomahawk, to General Abernathy, to G.I. Joe Hawk, to General Clayton Hawk Abernathy. Another way they sidestepped the trademark problem was to create new characters that were connected to old characters. In 2000, the version 1 Baroness figure was repainted and released as Chameleon, the illegitimate half-sister of the Baroness. Even Hasbro got mixed up in this. 2001 saw the release of Double Blast, a repainted version 1 roadblock figure. 
The next year, they released an eight-figure exclusive set at BJ's Wholesale Club that contained a repainted version one Roadblock figure named, well, Roadblock. The problem? His file card name was Charles L. Griffith, the real name of Double Blast from the year before. Roadblock's real name is Marvin F. Hinton. To add one more layer, the file card art was of Heavy Duty version 4. Oops. Speaking of Heavy Duty, he spent some time as a core team member while they didn't have Roadblock's name available for use. He is our last example of how a character can change over time. He was released in 1991 and his name was Lamont Morris. And besides being a heavy ordnance trooper, he was also a classical guitarist. Heavy Duty's life would change in 2003 when he was turned into a chef and became Roadblock's cousin during the Spy Troops and Valor vs. Venom storyline. His real name would change for the Rise of Cobra movie to Herschel Dalton. His Sigma 6 bio card made no mention of his real name, playing classical guitar, being a chef, or any relation to Roadblock. Finally, for the 50th anniversary of the G.I. Joe toy line, Heavy Duty once again became a classical guitarist as apparently he had hung up his oven mitts. While many of the early characters had names that generally fit what they did, such as Lifeline, Cutter, Mercer, and Cobra Commander, Hasbro did seem to toss names out every once in a while that didn't seem to match the characters they created, such as Sideswipe. Is he a medic or a transformer? How about Thunderwing? Is he a tank driver or another transformer? After 30 plus years, Hasbro now seems to understand the importance of the characters, even though for a while they would slap a random name onto some repainted figure. G.I. Joe has had its fair share of character confusion. We seem now to be at a point where G.I. Joe will always have its core characters, such as Duke, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Roadblock, Cobra Commander, Destro, Baroness, Zartan, and Storm Shadow. These characters will generally look the same and be in their same roles. Thank you for watching episode 2 of G.I. Joe Basic Training. If you'd like to drop us a line, please do so in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this and want to be notified of future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon next to it. I will see you next week on another episode of G.I. Joe Basic Training.